At the start of the 1980s, the question of who would be all Ireland champion this year was a question with a fairly predictable answer. Kerry. It simply had to be Kerry. Indeed, it was Kerry every year from 1978 through to 1981. And we couldn't really imagine a time when the men from the Kingdom wouldn't be the team to beat in the championship. But how things changed during the 80s? By the end of the decade, Cork had taken over from their arch rivals in Munster. Mead too had emerged again as a power in football, and others like Mayo, Monaghan and Tyrone, not to mention Offaly, had helped to widen competition in football again. But what about the 90s? What did they hold in store? Well, Cork had gone into the decade as All-Ireland champion, but Mead perhaps had something to prove in 1990. Having lost their length of title to Dublin, their critics were saying that Mead's moment in the sun had come to an end. But on the last Sunday in May, they signaled their intentions in the final of the Royal Library National League. Brown provided the opposition in a game that came to life at the start of the second quarter. with a precision shot. Ian Hayes lets it drop down with a support from Brendan Riley. Colm O'Rourke. Trying to get free of Sally Breen. Support coming through here. Liam Hayes. Run up against that. David Beggy. Oh, it's a perfect shot. A brilliant goal by Beggy. Thanks to the kicking skills of David Peggy. And here's Ambrose Rogers. Mickey Linden. Polly Byrne. Again, it's that flying corner for with James McCartan. Linden once again. Speaking to the saw down bleed, and that looks a very well struck shot. From fully 40, 35 metres out, Mickey Linden's third point. And Brown, who led throughout the opening quarter, are back in front again. Colin O'Rourke winding himself up for this sideline kick. Delightfully struck, beautifully put over the bar. Well, he's always good for a point or two in a match. And that's his very first. And the sides are back on level terms again. John Kelly has difficulty holding it. Paul Higgins. Dodging around Colin Coyle. Holding it up to strong enough. And goes Rogers. He has to score him again. Both games for Carton. And where McCarthy goes. Kevin Foley goes as well. Martin O'Connell. Rubbing it in for Colin O'Rourke. It runs on to the other column. Colin Coyle with the referee has blown the whistle. And the ball has been put into the back of the net. And the referee, I think, is saying to Colm O'Rourke, forgive me, forgive me, I have blown the whistle. <laughs> He's hanging his head. He knows that it was uh, just one of those things. Stafford picks his third point. An important week this for Brian Stafford, hoping to start with a winning medal here. He gets married on Friday. Touched in beautifully. Still is giving back the return. Bernard Flynn steadying and Bernard Flynn picks his second point. A glorious foul as it's now leads a goal ahead. One six to six points. Into James McCartan gets loose for one. He loses the ball but recovers. Good persistence to Joshua Cahillary. Slightly off balance but over the bar and he's kicked the last two points down. That's very confident. A lot of good. McLean stays with side winning by a point. Brendan, 
Bond and on towards uh, PJ Gillick and it's the penalty. They play on, but the penalty has been awarded. Brian Stafford has kicked six goals so far in the league. He's six for seven. Brian Stafford's penalty. Six with calmness and assurance. In the championship, Mead were to return to Club Park to take on Dublin in an epic length of final. But the first of the provincial deciders is played down south, where a new look Terry side is quietly hopeful of a change in fortune. However, at 43, they were in for a rude awakening, and the biggest monster final defeat ever dragged out to them by Cork. <laughs> Thompson 
runs again. It's like a sprint every time he gets the ball. Such confidence. And such finishing. What an outstanding performance this is by Larry Johnson. Five points this afternoon. Calling for it about him. The director to go over. Touched in. Oh, the celebrating. Getting the finger good. And that's how Tony is up. It was embarrassing for Terry in the end. 15 points adrift to the champion's talk who were led to a forced success of title by Larry Tonkin. And so it was back to the drawing board for Terry then, while Cork closed to the All Ireland semi finals. And there was no time for solos and tonus the fortnight later when Johnny Gall and our man met for the first time in an Ulster final. Conditions were bad, but both sides made light of it from the start. Damien Campbell from County Fermanagh, refereeing his second Ulster final, starts the 1999 final in St. Tiernock's Crown here in Tonus, County Monaghan. 30 to 35,000 people here, packed into this huge ground, and everybody anticipating an Ulster final to be remembered. Raining in Clonus. No wind, no sunshine, very humid, and Dunny Gall playing from right to left. Outside is Manus Vaughan, and that's the first score. After 35 seconds of play, the first score of the Ulster final goes to the man from Tilly Bag, St. County Dunny Gall. The crowd in the Compton Hill. Watches as the big Mark Grimley goes into the cloud. Mark and Coy not able to hold on to it. It comes to James McHugh. Combining well with Donald Reid. Who is fouled and a free to Johnny Gall. Quickly taken. Trying to find Anthony Malloy. Back to James McHugh. Martin McHugh is outside and this is Brother Martin. And that puts Johnny Gall even further ahead. Man Fabio, the hero of Donegal, puts Donegal now three points to one. This is Karen McGurk giving inside to Mark Wimley. That's a good effort, and that's his first point of this Ulster final. And now the sides are level. Big out comes straight to Mark McHugh, let him work hard for it. This is a great opportunity, it must be! Yes! Tommy Ryan, the scorer, but the referee has blown his whistle. He's calling back the play, and he is giving, I think, a free in to Dunny Gall. Tommy Ryan can't believe it, as Declan Bonner puts it over the bar, and Dunny Gall going to the lead by the narrowest of margins. Neil McGeary getting it inside to Mark Grimley. This is John Toner. Back to Grimley. They play club football together. And our mass distribution into us are forward. Not the very best to say the least. As Jim McConville makes space. This is Jim McGurk. With two goals and eight points to his credit already in the championship. Make that two goals and nine. This is Joyce McMullen roving all over the place. Give it inside to Mark Gavigan, playing at centre half back to Anthony Malloy, the captain of Donegal in the 1990 Ulster final. This is Mark McHugh, this is uh, Brian Murray. Ah, oh, that is a superb point. A brilliant movement by Donegal. It started way, way back, and the man who finished it was Brian Murray. Gives that cue. Gives it to the one and only Martin McHugh and Danny Gall going to the lead on a three point lead. There's a scoreline there, eight points to five. It's Martin Gavigan gives it outside to Tommy Ryan all alone. Gareth O'Neill giving him way too much space. And Tommy goes for height. Goes for accuracy, and the white flag is raised for Danny Gall. An inspirational score, surely, for Danny Gall by Tommy Ryan. 
from on just outside Leonard Kenny. Mac Gallagher is the one who gathers possession. Martin Gavigan having to go back to collect it. It's a good chance, but all alone is Neil Smith. This is uh, Leo McGeary, and another one of these high balls, lopping in around the house. Comes out to Jimmy McConville, and McConville high and over the bar. That's his first point, across the Glen Rangers start, as Armagh comes storming back. Good balling for Sherhulhan, always first to the ball, and set it right throughout the back, and this time it pays dividends as Ger Houlihan has equalised this Ulster final. Trying to get it in for a second border. Brian Canavan keeping with him, but second border puts Senegal into the lead. A distant cousin of the famous Patsy Bonner, but the Bonner can are alive in Clonus. Out by Brian McAlinden, superbly gathered by Mark Rimley. Also, it's Jim McConville over to Shane Shelton. Well, the cynics and the critics have been criticizing the Ulster Championship, but this Ulster final is producing a memorable occasion as Shane Shelton gets his second point of the afternoon. And make no mistake about it, this Ulster final is up for grabs. Inside, the man is foiled from a difficult angle. Off the post and over the bar. John Thornton now, Gallagher, came it into the man is foiled. And that is a superb point. Just three minutes left in the Ulster final. Armagh have to produce either a goal or two points to get it out of the fire. Anthony Malloy trying to find Tony Boyle. As the subs combine, this is Barry McGowan giving it inside. The man is foiled, and that is surely the insurance point. Killy Beggs will celebrate their hero, Man is foiled tonight. Celebrations all round as Anthony Malloy took the trophy home to Johnny Gall for only the country's fourth ever provincial title. In fact, Johnny Gall has now won it in the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, and each time under the guidance of Brian McInnes. It was Connacht's turn a week later at Dr. Hyde Pass, and you look, Galway had reached the final after beating champions Mayo. Now they face Ross Common, who'd lost the previous two finals. So they shared six points early on from three, but there was also action in the goal mouth. Really big crowd here, around about 20,000 people. John Newton missing, second Thatcher. Does it forward, Fergal O'Neill, the goal! But it's inside the square and it won't count. A square ball of Fergal O'Neill and famous far, absolutely correct it seems. Paul Early, back to Tommy Lennon. Paul Early wants to get in the clear, losing the ball. Francis McWalter. McWalter did very well there, but Paul Early should have buried that one, surely. It was an excellent chance. Croucher. Half lockdown, touched out by Tatsuri. Fetched over there. Put over the bar brilliantly. That was a very fine point by John Fallon and Galway have gone back in front again. Four points to three. Paul Hickey with the kick. Famous Cullowan spreading the play wide outside to Joey Connaughton. The Commonwealth man inside to a fellow clubman. Junior McManus, good shoulder that was by Gerald Farrell. McManus doing well however, but he carried the ball forward. He argues with the referee, but he seems to foul the ball. This is McManus, and to follow his way forward. The first stop. And then, I think the referee just decided that he over -travels. Meanwhile, it's Galway. who stretched their lead. As Tomas 
Mannion puts the ball over the bar to make it five points to three. One of the newcomers, one of nine newcomers in the Galway side this year. Leafly gathered by John Fallon, who's got uh, one of the Galway points in this opening half. in the last couple of minutes for Galway from way out the field hopping well and going over the bar Roscommon haven't lost four of the last five Connacht football finals a bad kick and it almost came good Paul Ernie was waiting for it and it was taken off the goal line by Hugh Blahin I think the midfield player who loves to go back and defend when Galway are in a spot of bother. This was Graham making up his mind. A bad kick really. Paul Early touched it in and that was playing, yes, waiting on the goal line. Meanwhile, back with play. Russ Cummins gets himself back and it's Paul Early who kicks his third point. So just two points between the teams again. So much of the action from this first half encapsulated in the last five minutes of play. The Farrell is doing a good job against Paul Early, but it has to be a little bit tighter as that played off beautifully to Julian McManus. And Julian McManus with a precision shot with his left foot has cut back the deficit just a solitary point. Newton, showing his strength and tenacity on the right foot and Ross Common goes two points from the clear John Newton the guard of Ace in Dublin getting that answer with his trusty right foot well he really had to be physically strong and fully committed showing a nice subtle touch then to ease it over the crossbar it's eight points to six of someone looking very purposeful is Tom Cram, former minor star of about two years ago and it's over the bar, delighted with himself, Tom Cram. His first point this afternoon and Ross Common opened up a three-point gap. This has been a very good opening six minutes to the half. Paul Early and it runs in list for Tommy Lennon. No goals in the game so far. Ross Common looking for a penalty. It comes to Tony McManus and he has the wisdom to top it over the crossbar. It's just his first point in the game. But it keeps Ross Common those couple of points ahead. Ten points to seven. Lennon was in there tossing, held it seems inside in the small rectangle. Perhaps there was a penalty on there. But the referee didn't give it. Ooh, a big exaggerated leap in the air and that has really hurt Tom Cram. Meanwhile, it's Val Daly. Ten points to seven, remember. Daly has the wisdom, the experience and the patience to hold on and then kick delightfully over the bar. It's fifth point of the afternoon and another very, very important one for Galway's man of the match so far. <laughs> quite hard by McWalter. Holds on however and he exacts the full amount of engine. Watch for that challenge by McWalter. That was a foul but the referee decided that despite the elbow in the head that uh, he would give the advantage a good advantage. Same as Killoran for a Roscommon side who are seeking today to win the Connacht title for the 17th time. Held in play by Tony McManus, but the umpire has signaled that the ball and Tony's legs went out over the end line. It's Junior McManus, Andy Leyland, touched away by Brian Moyle, and the real star is Donald Brady. Ball early, trying to turn inside Gerald Farrell. A good looking move. Looked up, faded into the 
fast. It was a difficult one for the fullback to contain. He was just too far forward. Early got in, in his stride, tapped it over. Good point. Donald Brady, Seamus Kalora, and up there to Julian McManus. Again on his best left foot, and it's over the ball. Alan Mulholland has remained forward, stopped by Donald Brady. Seems to be fouled, but the referee allowed an advantage. Okay. Fabrico D. Trying to get the ball inside for the other substitute, Barrett. Foul Daly. And that has gone over the bar. It has the range and it's the six points. Brian Barrett combining there with Val Daly. Ross Common back trying to tie up Brian Barrett, but he still managed to find Val Daly coming in on the right hand side onto his left foot and a fine through shot. Just about 12 minutes to go. Tony McManus. This is Vincent Glennon. Junior McManus has been popping up everywhere in the Ross Common attack. And he's really having one of the finest games I suppose he's ever played for us, Common. But it mattered most, the Common Mailman has struck over another point, his fourth, all of them from play. Well, we're occasionally living dangerously as they play that ball with a lot of patience and short passes out of defence. But they have to be precise, they are on this occasion. Mulholland. Now has he the pace to go forward from Pat Fury? He has. Good chances. Support. Fergal O'Neill. A goal! A goal by Fergal O'Neill. He may have been denied in the opening minute of the match by a square ball. He's got an all-important one with 26 for his son in the second half. Despite the best efforts of Fergal O'Neill and Val Daly, it was worth common say. Somewhere in there, Paul Early held the Nestle Cup and even was just award for a country which had lost four comic finals in five years. And now they look forward to a date with Cork in the first of the All-Ireland semi-finals. Two Leinster now and one of the greatest games of the year. The old rivals Dublin and Mead were to test each other at the foes at Croke Park. Dublin were champions, Mead wanted the title back. It was as simple as that and Mead didn't hang about in driving home the message. Paddy Collins, one of the game's most respected officials, referee of four All-Ireland Finals, gets his sixth Leinster final underway. And it's me to play into the wind with Colin Brady here. Bernard Flint. Quickly angle trying to set up TJ Gillick. Up to Brady. A dangerous one for John O'Leary. And it's in. Colin O'Rourke has scored a goal in Mead's very best attack. Dublin waiting, perhaps expecting a free out. It was perfectly fair as Brady floated it in. The wind held up the ball somewhat. John O'Leary was in something of a bitter. Watch for the run in. A perfectly fair challenge and a perfectly good goal by Colm O'Rourke after 30 seconds. Support in the corner back position, the only one he could aim it at was Tommy Carr, and the angle was tight to the pass. Scott Martin, TJ Gillick here. Gives a scoring opportunity and he avails of it. Gets his first point of the game as well. A little strapping 23 year old. Work, making the running in this opening half. This is Bernard Flynn. Bidding to win back their championship. There's Paul and Bernard up on the far side. Martin O'Connell, the striker of the sixth thing. Right half back, here he is. Going for a pot himself and going for a point. An excellent point by the St. Michael's Lab. A really good start by the league champion. 17 minutes gone on 
and they're all playing so confidently and Dublin allowing them so much space to be creative and set up attacking scores and O'Connell just needed a little bit of leeway and from a fair distance out easily 40 metres he's blasted over Tommy Carr Dublin really stretched to the back of the ball just a clear by McLean played a tremendous match Paul Carr, slightly off balance, but that looks a beauty. Dublin has needed a point like that, and Paul Carr, the former minor captain, has given them that piece of inspiration, their first point from play. David Fallen, Paul Carr once again. Not in the A1 position that he intended, here he having to go back and make up some ground. Terry Ferguson in a challenge over there with Niall Clancy it comes down to Charlie Redmond and Dublin has scored the last two points Aaron Zyle, Charlie Redmond gets his first point Dublin fourth it's looking a good deal healthier all of a sudden for Dublin Terry Ferguson beaten in a fair challenge and it broke down to Charlie Redmond and the finish was on Aaron Carr just going to fist it down but only as far as Bernard Flynn Colin O'Rourke is making a run through the middle this is O'Rourke a goal chance here oh he's missed a glorious chance what is he so angry with himself Colin O'Rourke who played in his first Leinster final back in 1976 a player of great experience he hit it well but well outside the target Oh, wondering how that one stayed out. Stafford. All that will make up in part at least for the one that got away. Brian Stafford kicks his first point from play, his fifth and all. One seven to four points. And Barney Rock is coming into the match. He may not be fully fit, but it's a case of bringing in a man with a proven record from Freeze in particular from play as well and so Rock is in and Clancy's off Keith Barr oh this is a long one, a huge one again brilliantly gathered by the cover back there Robbie O'Malley Martin O'Connell kept moving on the challenge there by Heary who is well fired up at this stage
Billy Murphy. And that tie and that foot over the bar, the very first point by Leo Close having come on just a moment ago. First attack, first score. All of that coming from Barney Rock's blighted free kick. Billy Murphy held it. It was half blocked out, out as far as Leo Close reacted smartly and a good, good shot over the crossbar. support from David Foran. The ball is needed in quickly. Ball and Foran holding on just a little bit too long. Leo Close realising that Dublin needing a score quickly. A goal will do an awful lot for the match. That high challenge there. And it's Liam Hayes who's crawled across and he becomes the third player to have his name taken in this Leinster final. That's the 20 metre line, Dublin needing a point here, and Barney can provide it. His first point since coming in as the first half substitute. The Mead fans, I think, have felt that their team has had this match won, and now all of a sudden, they're having to live on their nerves somewhat. Tremendous rivalry between these two counties has been for a number of years, one of the most intense Leinster finals for years. near him and then create an opening inside he's gone for the point himself and that's three points in succession now that first one there for Keith Barr he's such a good kicker of a ball normally from the ground that was a lovely deep one and up on the hill all of a sudden they see their team come within a goal and a point of me We mentioned a little while ago that Dublin and the game itself needed a Dublin goal. Well, they've given us three points. It's the same as that. It reaches Vinnie Murphy. Hayes trying to get back goal side. Support from Barney Rock. Only four points between them. Meade the leaders. David Foran outside of the boot. Held by Joe McGalley. Awkward angle. High and over the bar. And there's just a goal of the day. Joe McNally from St. John's getting his first point of the afternoon and what a vital one it is now trying to rally the forward line in particular finally in the second half the Dublin machine has started to pick off its scores it really has the makings of a great last 20 minutes TJ Gellick support outside from David Peggy he finally gets it trying to turn inside wrestled around there by Eamon Heary foul free to me David Peggy with the option of taking it from the ground or taking it from the hands and it looks like it's Brian Stafford who's going to come across and take it. This was Peggy making his run. There was the foul by Heary. The jeering on the hill greeting the kick by Brian Stafford who's kicked six points already. And that's the perfect answer to those who jeer the free takers. He's kicked his seven. Six of the seven points coming from trees and neither a goal and a point ahead again. But all of a sudden, it's anyone's game. Ball start. Lobbed outside to Eamon Heary. A Dublin man on the ground as the play goes on. Up towards McGowan, fed inside towards Charlie Redmond. Mead getting back in great numbers, but this is McNally to drill one wide from a splendid opening. Joe McNally has squandered a fine opportunity, and he knows it. Redmond had attracted five and six Mead men towards him as they all got back goal side. McNally had come from a wide position into the centre, and that was a glorious chance. Passes for inside there by Vinnie Murphy. Inside towards the substitute Leo Close. Meade disciplined and containing the Dublin attack. Spills out towards Heary. Challenged by Robbie O'Malley. A foul by Robbie O'Malley and the referee with the notebook out. We've had three bookings already in the game. Two of them for Meade, one for Dublin. And this is going to be a third Meade booking. Barney Rock has 
a chance to cut the leeway. He's put it over the bar. Barney has now kicked three points. And there's just a goal in the game. That goal which came in the opening 30 seconds of the match. Four kick out. Because the pressure is now back on Mead once again. There are just over 12 minutes to go. A goal in the match. decide to hop the ball because it was a stalemate situation just inside Dublin's 20 meter line Leo Close and Martin O'Connell the two players who will be involved Lee Ferguson wanting a piece of the action as well possession vital at this stage for both teams Martin O'Connell secure but the pass reaches David Foran in towards John McNally Fair with a good pair of hands it spills down breaks loose Billy Murphy looking for a point and getting it and now there's just two points between the teams Billy Murphy's first point this afternoon celebration time now for Dublin it's been a very good second half for them they were five points behind Rundle at half time Colm O'Rourke look where he is back trying to hold up the progress of Charlie Redmond Dublin win themselves the free Barney Rock prepared to take the responsibility on his shoulders. This is a key kick. And that's a vital score. The bare minimum now between the teams. These were playing with such style and panache. One felt they had the title won. But Dublin had the resolve and the character to come back. Martin O'Connell will realise that the forwards have got to get moving again inside the last five minutes as Mead is to win back the title they lead by a point and Colin O'Rourke can give them the leadership PJ Gillick just to get into space but there's nobody responding quickly enough Tommy Carr buzzing it out but only as far as Bernard Flynn this is a vital point if it's on its way and it looks to be a good one Bernard Flynn started the second half with a point and now he's got the latest point. His second of the match comes with four minutes to go. Two points between the teams. Well claimed by David Foran. Towards McGalvin, whose jersey was being held by Mick Lyons. And the fullback concedes a free, which Barney Rock should have the simplest of tasks in cupping it over the bar. Tommy Dowd has just gone off the lead team, being congratulated by Sean Boylan, and the player who's come in is Jerry McEntee. Barney Rock has tapped it over the bar. A point the difference once again, 112, 15 points, Dublin 14. Jerry McEntee back from the United States, back in midfield, trying to inspire a little bit more life into the Mead attack. Under three minutes remaining. An engrossing length to final. Full of spirit and commitment. This is Jerry McEntee, his first touch. But look at the number of Dublin players around him. That will leave a couple of Mead players free. Bernard Flynn here. Colm O'Rourke. This is Stafford. What a great finale. Martin O'Connell back to Stafford. Trying to be absolutely sure with his kick. And he's absolutely inch perfect. Brian Stafford has kicked his eighth point of the afternoon. A really good football match. Martin O'Connell. As Meade now tried to embellish their lead. And it's Stafford first to the ball, laying it off for Beggy, taking it in his stride, kicking it confidently, and that looks to be a match winner. David Beggy has kicked his first point this afternoon. A goal between the teams. The Mead fans celebrating in the stands. And celebrations were in order. Brave Dublin were beaten in a great contest, and Mead had their trophy back. They now have three weeks to rest up and prepare for Johnny Gall. After their exploits in Munster, champions caught were clear favourites to emerge from the first of the semi-finals. 
What's common though? Didn't quite see it like that. Joey Connaughton into space. Tony McManus trying to contain the pass. Laying one inside for his teammate Tommy Lennon. An opening chance brilliantly created by Tony McManus. Cork grouping well, however. Disciplined in defence. And something of a let off in the opening minute. Well, there was a real scoring chance there, surely, for Roscommon. Pelletier. Shea Fahey. Again coming out of his full forward position. Laid in for Paddy Hayes. This is Harry Tompkins. 14 metres out. Brilliant save by Paul Stolted. A cracking shot by Larry Tompkins. Cork's first attack. But the goalkeeper, Paul Staunton, was more than a match for it. Brilliantly taken by Paul Early. Transferred down to Seamus Killoran. Cut out, however, by Tony Nation. Potted forward by Tommy Lennon to Tony McManus. A good ball by Tony McManus and a superb goal. But the referee has cancelled it out. No goals for the referee. He took too many steps. The goal doesn't count, but a lovely piece of individual skill. Did he take more than four steps? The last common fans, you can be sure, will not agree. Larry Tompkins who can always be depended upon he's got a second point in the match and Cork are back in front once again in what's proving to be a very hard fought All-Ireland semi-final by no way the one-way traffic people were predicting not such a good kick out once again once again up with the attack he may have missed one a little bit earlier I mean got the slack but he's got one on this occasion and Cork open up a two point gap but he really is a very pacey half back McSlocum Paul McGrath needs to look outside to Paddy Hayes in his stride, he's put it over the bar. Cork now beginning to play with a bit more expression. This was flicked outside brilliantly by Paul McGrath to Paddy Hayes. Sarah was out of football for over a season with a nasty knee injury and he's made a very good recovery. He's opened up a two-point gap. Tony Davis against Vincent Glennon. Glennon does well. He's got support outside. Then carrying it forward inside himself. Good penetrating run, but he must deliver that final pass. Talking something of a dizzy. Leaving Glennon in. And he has missed a really good opening, which he has created himself. Curious run really by Glennon, way out on the right hand side it started. Joey 
Louis Connaughton. Common side looking for their first point of the second half and they've got another opportunity with Connaughton going forward kicking and he's put it over the bar it's a brilliant point for the wing back Joey Connaughton what Michael Slocum can do for Cork Connaughton can do for Roscommon eight points to seven but the amount of space that Connaughton was afforded will concern the Cork mentors I'm sure McGrath incisively going forward but going wide being taken out wide by Des Newton not a good ball inside but it's back by Dave Barry to McCarthy oh brilliantly over the bar watch it wasn't the best of plays by Paul McGrath he half hit his shot it got in loose watch for the run by Dave Barry the little flick back the defence were tightly marking but McCarthy was left loose for once yet again being taken off the Roscommon team and Matty Riley has just been given the little slip of paper that's McNeil off meanwhile in this non-stop action semi-final Hawk leading by two points Shea Fahey Paul McGrath holding on with some difficulty high restraining challenge by Tommy Lennon an advantage allowed by Damien Campbell the referee up towards Callum O'Neill the support play again brilliantly executed into Paul McGrath deftly struck I think he was going to the top left hand corner quite honestly he had a point for the taking surely and I think he was going for a goal here Michael McCarthy in fairness was coming in across on the far side in a kind of top of the left position McGrath started it finished it I think he was trying to flick that one up in over the goalkeeper's head Driving run forward. Larry Tompkins. Into space towards Michael McCarthy. He's made a marvellous difference in coming in. Direct play, direct route to goal, and he's now got three points. That's Michael Donlan, a sub coming in for Ross Common. Seamus Caloran, no that's Seamus Caloran, he's gone across towards the far side, is he being taken off? It is indeed, strangely, Seamus Caloran has gone, he may have picked up an injury, seems to be feeling the right shoulder, meanwhile it's Michael Donlan, straight into the action, Tommy Lennon, back to Donlan, picking the point, it's first piece of the action, and Michael Donlan has cut the leeway to just two points. Michael Donlan's a very mobile performer. Might well have felt a bit unlucky to have been left out of the Connacht final selection in the first place, but he's here and he's making an impact.
This was that incident once again where Tony Davis was in there to take the pass, fed back to him by Paul McGrath, off the crossbar, yes. Tony Nation taking the sideline ball, he has switched by the way with Tony Davis, he's now back in the court full back line. Meanwhile it's Paul McGrath in the court forward line, Paddy Hayes calling for it. McGrath has the confidence to take it onto his trusty right boot and put over his second point of the match and open up a two-point gap once again. Poor kick out. Sets up the Roscommon defence in some trouble once again. Matty Riley there conceding the free for the push on Paddy Hayes. And many of them, I'm afraid, have come from the goalkeeper's kick outs. Larry Tompkins, the free taker, just outside the 20 metre line. Remember, it's Cork 11, Ross Common 9. Larry kicks his third point of the match. In the 19th minute of the second half. Well, the United Nations seem to be supporting Cork as always. Danny Cullity, of course, comes from America and spent most of his... Uh, youth and teenage years in uh, California. Nine points for Roscommon, 12 for Cork. 22 minutes into the second half. Johnny McManus winning the free and always right beside him is Stephen O'Brien. Into the unmarked Vincent Glennon. The large effort by Glennon has produced another point second and it's a two-point game once again John Cleary has just been introduced into the Cork team in place of Paddy Hayes marked, made it his, against Michael Donlan. It's Colm O'Neill, Frank Cogan you see in the background there, urging his side on, still O'Neill. Swept in beautifully to Paul McGrath, this may well, it doesn't, it might well have been the game's first goal, but it was a brilliant piece of interception. looking move this. Paul McGrath the one who had got in but it was brilliantly intercepted and played away I think by Paul Hickey. It's common I mean, to realize that they're still very much in there. With a real good chance. No goals in the game so far. Paul Early fisting it on and that was very nearly being the first legitimate one as it were. in the air, Paul Early going in, connecting with the fist, and that's Matthew Riley, superb since he came in for Ross Common at centre half back, Junior McManus down towards Tommy Lennon, Tony Davis, Cahalan, on the trusty left boot, up towards Colm O'Neill, holds it well, supports inside from Michael McCann. He has the pace, but he's taken down. Foul. And it's going to be a free from the 20 metre line. Larry Tompkins with the kick. He's got another one. Four points for Larry Tompkins. And Cork now open up a three point lead began to pull away after that, although their seven-point winning margin was somewhat flattering at the finish. It was certainly a game that the All-Ireland champions were glad to get out of their system. A week later, Dublin was awash with green and gold as fans from Donegal and Mead converged on Croke Park. PJ Gillick was to give the Leinster champions a tonic start. And it's Brian Murray who takes possession straight away from the throw-in, but he holds on too long taken by Colin Brady, PJ Gillick, 
Bernard Flynn has been marked by Matt Gallagher. Trying to set up Brian Stafford. Look where he is, 40 meters out. Booted into the corner. Brilliantly taken by Gillick. High and it's put over the bar. He started the movement and he completes it. Descends once again rather ominously on Croke Park as Brian Murray punts it forward. It was intended for James McHugh. Cut out, however, by Martin O'Connell. Tommy Dowd here. Coming well away from his position. That's Liam Hayes. Being taken by David Dougie. Incisively going forward. Dangerous for Danny Ball. Gallagher waited for Gally Walsh to kick it, but only as far as P.J. Gillick, and he's put it over the bar once again. Two pots of goal for Gillick, and two points for me. Well, he's young in years, and he's achieved an awful lot in a relatively short time, P.J. Gillick. Brian Stafford playing about 45 metres and maybe 50 metres out from his own goal line for most of this match so far. Donald Lee trying to set up the full forward. Boyle with a shot. And Tony Boyle is putting over the bar. The 20-year-old gets Danny Ball's first score in the sixth minute of the first half. Gunnigan against P.J. Gillick. Pumped forward. Such good direct play. It's paying off. And this is Bernard Flynn to try and seal it with a goal. And he's got it. 19 minutes into the first half. John Cunningham. Oh, it's a loose hand pass. Picked up by Liam Hayes who can capitalise on the error. Team captain, Colm O'Rourke. DJ Gillick had a number of options, but the option he wished to take is to pick directly his third point of the match. Meade's direct tactics are paying off. Donald Reid being challenged over there. Some challenge by Tommy Dowd. It's over intense. A second point for Danny Gold sails over the crossbar thanks to the accuracy of Martin McHugh. A point which keeps them in touch. Breaks down well to Martin McHugh. Feeding it forward toward Joyce McMullen. They dovetail well. But he misdirects his shot. The challenge came in there at the very finish. There's a good understanding on that half forward line between Martin McHugh and Joyce McMullen. Played in many a championship game together. needs to be good and it is to rekindle a little bit more hope there's a goal between the teams 28 minutes gone in the first half Danny Gold playing with a great deal more belief now in the last 10 minutes that's Martin Gavigan that's gone in towards Manus Boyle well the goalkeeper making a vital interception with Manus Boyle there almost stealing in for Danny Gold's first goal of the game. But brilliantly forward as it sailed over the defender's head and watch as Manus Boyle was stealing in here from the top of the left position as the goalkeeper came out and in fact it ricocheted off the forward's leg as well. Donald Reid finally taking it up. Joyce McMullen. 
He's holding it up because there's just one man really to aim at inside there. And that's uh, Tony Boyle. Most of them are grouping outside. This is Boyle under the dropping ball. Breaks down. And it's a penalty. A penalty. Declan Donner was injured as he was playing that ball in. There's a goal between the teams, remember. We're in injury time at the end of the first half. An interesting decision by the referee. Awarding the penalty to Johnny Gall. For an incident after the ball was floated in that time by Declan Bonner, who himself was fouled when the ball was played in. So it's Donald Smith who will take it. I was told this morning that Martin McHugh, if he was playing well, if he felt well, might take the penalty. But I don't think he's going to take it. It's going to be Manus Boyd who's going to take it. Brian McInniff was saying he'd let the players out on the field make the decision themselves. Donald Smith, the goalkeeper. It's gone in. Donald Smith, the goalkeeper, got a hand to it. But Manus Boy has put the side level. A minute into injury time. A penalty that was converted with calmness and admirable assurance. The goalkeeper did well. But the sides all tied up. It's half time. meter line touched in and touched over the bar and I think it's David Beggy who's the one who takes the credit for that one his first point restoring Meade's advantage dropped in well and Beggy the one who got up and yes stumped it over with the fist nicely forward Colum O'Rourke trying to contain it instead it's taken Danny Gold playing themselves into some trouble Bernard Flynn outside to the unmarked Brian Stafford capitalising on the inaccuracy in defence his second point and Meade now lead by two four minutes into the second half points between the teams. Declan Bonner feeding it back to Donald Reed. Well directed and well saved by the goalkeeper. Oh, a stack here and straight to Bonner. High and it's over the bar and there's just a one point differential. A second point by Declan Bonner from the Rasa. 1-6, 1-5. Let's it behind, picks it up again. Bonner getting more and more into the action. Joyce McMullen striving to come a little bit more into it. Against the other number 12, going by, good solo run. He's a player of good quality and good skill, Joyce McMullen. Martin O'Connell with dogged persistence, however, follows him along the line, but follows him.
spirited and highly skilled performance by Danny Gall. Matching stride for stride. Oh dear. Brian Murray rushed his kick. He was far too hasty. Well, he realises it, so did the Danny Gold fans. There was nobody near him, really, when that ball was played inside. He might well have had a goal chance, even. And it's David Beggy trying to knife his way through this defence. They've looked so prominent and so promising an attack, me. Brian Stafford. Breaks down to Liam Hayes. A score chance here. Bernard Flynn. Well, they're giving Donegal really a lesson in how to take the chances when they come. Flynn now the scorer of a goal at a point. His side ahead by a point once more. to Joyce McMullen Donegal needing a score and will it come from this to Martin McHugh blocked down Kevin Foley off the line virtually just clear eventually by Brendan Riley but the man in the vital spot that time was Kevin Foley it was half hit by Martin McHugh but Foley made the interception and the clearance watch as it spilled down from Manus Boyle to Martin McHugh Kevin Foley, the one who touched it and just got it away. Missed by Liam Hayes. David Peggy. Jerry McEntee. Laying it into the path of Bernard Flynn. Gary Walsh. With the sunshine making a welcome appearance here in Pro Park. David Beggy swinging it wide across towards Bernard Flynn. Some consternation, lashed in, and a goal! Brian Stafford! A goal out of nothing! There were defenders there who might well have contained the ball and driven it well out of defence. But Stafford was on hand for once around the danger area as the ball broke down from two defenders watch for Stafford coming in left foot wham into the corner off the goalkeeper Martin McHugh has been taken off the Denny goal team so often a match winner in the past not this afternoon so far Colin O'Rourke across to Bernard Clinton inside a minute may well decide this semi-final tie 26 and a half minutes into the second half just a minute or so after Brian Stafford had got me the other goal their second of the game Bernard Flynn came in and lashed wide for Meade's third goal. Those two goals effectively killed off the Northern Challenge and it set the scene for the meeting of the two best teams in the country, Cork and Meade. Now as All-Ireland's final day arrived, those sensible enough to arrive on time were treated to a really wonderful minor game with Meade and Kerry serving up rich promise for the future. And up there moves on the get Jason O'Hanrick. Anthony O'Brien. Ja, 
Dann vor uns an der Gelesch, an der Schöne. Und für das Rennen, wie immer, das hat neu gegeben. point lead to win. The Mead fans then turned to their seniors. Were they the ones to upset Cork's hopes of a double? Well, that story was to unfold in a gripping 17-minute final. He had left our forward, his namesake Mick from Skibbereen in the corner. This is the meet 15 this afternoon. The experienced Jerry McIntyre resuming his midfield alliance with Liam Hayes. Colin Brady moves into the half forward line and wears the number 12 shirt. Cork's 19th All Ireland final. Mead 12. A quick check on the watch by referee Paddy Russell. It's Cork from left to right in the first half. And straight away, Danny Cullity trying to set up Paul McGrath. Transferred, intended for Teddy McCarthy, booted away by Jerry McEntee. The foul is recorded. Larry Tompkins leaving the free to Colm O'Neill, which is interesting. Larry might well have opted to take it. Perhaps doesn't feel the leg is quite up to it. We'll see a little bit later on whether that's in fact the case. Colm O'Neill has driven his wife. And that won't do his confidence very much as Cork forfeit a promising opening. Breaks down into the arms of Danny Cullity once again, his second possession in the match. Into Shea Fahey, going for a score himself. And he's put it over the bar. The first point has come after a minute and 20 seconds. Today here playing in his fifth championship match for me. Midfield will be very interesting indeed. Larry Thompson going back into that section straight away. Shea Fahey driving it forward towards Callum O'Neill. The first ball really between O'Neill and Mick Lyons. Still down to Terry Ferguson. Fouled by Dave Barry. Three out to me. Liam Hayes. Here's Mick Slocum. Attempting to bring Mick McCarthy into the game over there. Robbie O'Malley. And he's showing us a tiny bit too much of it there to Mick McCarthy, but recovers well. Kevin Foley. Having a very good season. Likewise, Bernard Flynn. Coming away from the corner forward position. Tony Nation has followed. Danny Colby. Danny Dave Barry. Releasing Stephen O'Brien. Scored a point in the semi-final win against Rock Common, dispossessed by a magnificent piece of interception from Martin O'Connell. David Peggy was attempting to get loose, Barry Coffey. Anxious moments as both sides try to assert themselves. That's Slocum, buzzing it forward, cut out by Jerry McEntee, linking up brilliantly with Robbie O'Malley. Into the clear, towards Colin Brady. And Tony Nation does well. There was a breakdown of cover at the back that time. Jerry 
back into trying to dispossess the inequality. It's into Larry Tompkins. Cork ahead by a point, remember. Terry Ferguson. Into the side of PJ Gillick. Being marked by Conor Cunahan, who has a fantastic record in matches against me. There is five matches so far against me in the last four years. Only one point has been scored against him. That's by Joe Castles in the replay 88 final. Larry Coffey fouled by David Beggy. John Kearns. Liam Hayes rising up for it. Larry Tompkins is playing anywhere but on the 40. Very much in midfield right now. Showing no great effect of an injury as he's fouled that time by Leeds number 5, Brendan Riley. And the referee going across. And he was having a word there with Mick Lyons in the bookout. Well, whatever incident happened, the umpires brought it to his attention, which is great combined play by the officials. And the referee, Paddy Russell, laying down the law early and saying to the players, if you step out of line, I'll have none of it. Bahi with the free. Driven deep towards Barry Tompkins. Brilliantly touched by Terry McEntee. Back in the knee, Sellers. He was fouled as he released that ball. O'Malley having to take the free from the ground because it was McEntee who was the one who was fouled. So Fahey catching well. Surrounded by four Mead men. Still blues towards Michael McCarthy. Teddy McCarthy, his namesake. In towards Callum O'Neill. A difficult one for him to contain. He was being fouled by Mick Lyons, the official decides. Mick doesn't agree, shrugs the head. He's driven it over. Larry Tompkins with his first point of the match, and Cork lead by two points to no score. for position in midfield, that's taken by Jerry McIntyre, he was restrained, he was fouled, and he's leaving the free for his partner Liam Hayes, driven in well towards Colm O'Rourke, easy for John Kearns however, Malka Halan, Shea Fahey, always a man coming up in support, and this time it's the centre half back, Conor Cunahan, driven deep towards Colm O'Neill, getting well away, going for a shot, Extend 
half-court sleeve. Just raises the top of the crossbar over the goalkeeper's fingers. And it's a second point for Larry Tompkins. So Fahey was there a push, yes. No question about it. Say Fahey concedes the free. Free quickly taken. Down towards Brian Stafford. Big slogan trying to pick it up neatly, but it's one loose too. As it determines Colin O'Rourke, the team captain, holds on too long. Well, he will claim, I'm sure, that he had very little latitude. Turns with the free. Aim towards Gary Tompkins again. Against Kevin Foley. so far in the game. Harry Coffey. This is Shea Coffey. Trying to get outside towards Mick Slocum. Switch wing virtually from the start. Dave Barry doing well, making it his, putting it on to Paul McGraw. Trying to round Terry Ferguson. Danny Kelly in an advanced position, as he likes to do. That can't have been too much in it. Harry Coffey trying to get loose with David Beggy there in pursuit. That's Shea Fahey. Terry Ferguson coming out from his cornerback position. On towards David Beggy, who's yet to really get a piece of the action against Barry Coffey. Now McCarthy into Dave Barry anywhere but out on the right wing. Booted away brilliantly by Robbie O'Malley to P.J. Gilly trying to get the three man full forward line going. This is Stafford. Colm O'Rourke is calling for it. Brian Stafford going it alone. And that is a brilliant piece to finish in. Oh, it was an outstanding and short piece of shooting by Brian Stafford when others were looking for it. Holding off the challenges from just inside the 45 meter line that's an excellent point. Martin O'Connell, a superb catch. Down towards Bernard Flynn. Against Tony Nation. Trying to sell some dummies. On the left boot. High. And it's over the bar. And the sides are level. In the last two minutes, Brian Stafford and Bernard Flynn have got pieces of the action. Got some ball into their hands and they've converted both chances. Kevin Foley trying to take it away from the midfielder Shea Fahey. Free to me. Foley's had a very, very good season when you consider that he kept players of the calibre of Kieran Duff and Martin McHugh scoreless from play in the Leinster final and All-Ireland football semi-final. Sides level three points apiece. Tony Nation reading the intentions. Tompkins flicks forward into space towards Colm O'Neill. Hawks' ploy seems to be to try and isolate Colm O'Neill with Mick Lyons. The other corner forwards are playing in a more withdrawn role. And the ball has been played in fast and early towards Colm O'Neill against Mick Lyons. To the left, led by Lyons. He loves to be in there under the dropping ball. Shea Fahey touches it down. Mick Slocum. Ooh. Overhead to Barry Coffey. Beggy nipping in. Trying to keep it moving along the line. Went off uh, Colm O'Rourke, I think. Well, David Beggy has made over 40 journeys from Scotland this year just to be part of Mead's training session at weekends. Oh, Gillick has taken a very high one to the face there. Stephen O'Brien was the player. And he's in there claiming that it was a fair shoulder. But not shoulder to shoulder, the referee has uh, pointed out. That's tailed away and wide. by Jerry McEntee, but only as far as Conor Cunahan. This is on for Danny Colletti. Towards Paul McGrath. Game strangely to it's subdued so far. This is McGrath. Back to Mick McCarthy. On his shooting left boot. And it sails over the crossbar. Three points in the semi. And now one 
here in the final itself. That's a goal and six points in all he's got in this year's championship. Well, so far it's proving to be a good, tough, competitive All-Ireland final. Dave Barry towards Colm O'Neill, judging the hop well. Mick McCarthy calling for the way at the far corner. Colm going on a solo effort. Linking up with Larry Tompkins, brilliantly knocked down by Kevin Foley, sticking to his task like a leash, brilliantly done. This is McCarthy again. In the follow-up, he's put it over the bar, he's got two points. Well, when you consider that in 1988, in the two finals on Bobby O'Malley, number two there, he only managed one point, he's now managed two in the space of a minute. midfield so far as Liam Hayes links up with Colm O'Rourke. O'Rourke looking for some space in which to get in a shot but it ends up being a rather undisputed shot at that. Just a down by Shay Fahey. Dave Barry chipping it forward towards Paul McGrath. Curdy Ferguson trying to stick to his path. There was a push however and uh, just heating up for a moment. The referee nipping in quickly to have a word with Martin O'Connell warning him about the action that happened immediately before that. Paul McGrath getting himself gingerly off the ground. Larry Tompkins. Terry Ferguson tripped by Colin O'Neill after O'Neill had lost his chance of getting that ball.
by Liam Hayes and just watch for the tall Colm O'Rourke. Did he step out over the end line? Yes, he did. It used to be 10. Santos Colomoro brilliantly fetched ahead of Stafford. No question about the free in for me. This can cut back the lead to two points. As they shape up one another down there. And common sense prevails, thankfully. That was a magnificent catch, I think, there by Colomoro ahead of Niall Cahalan. He's doing well. Hoping to make his way into the rectangle but of course it would have been a penalty Stafford a depth of the chip another point that's three for the first half touchdown by Shea Tahi but only as far as Martin O'Connell driven back defiantly by O'Connell again towards Colm O'Rourke to try to get him into the game as much as possible. David Beggy likewise has had a fairly subdued first half. And much the same for PJ Gillick. Cork I think will be much the happier of the two sides heading into the break at this stage. Colm O'Neill and the pick up off the ground by Colm O'Neill.
two teams following the build up to the final. Harry Coffey drives it in. Touchdown by Mick Lyons, but only as far as Paul McGraw right across the face of the goal. Martin O'Connell with the clearance. But straight back out into the arms of a fourth man again. This time it's Shea Fahey. Defiantly driven it back in and he's put it over the bar. He's got three points in the match. If memory serves me correct, he got the first point in the game and now he's got the first point of the second half. A two point difference. There. And the referee saw it there against PJ Gillick. Free is quickly taken by Gillick. Didn't take a feather out of him. Bernard Flynn. On to David Peggy. Player with great pace. This possessed by Barry Coffey. Well, he really wants to tell all and sundry that he's more than worth his place on this fourth team, whether it's at half forward or half back. Shea Fahey. Outstanding so far. Into Dave Barry. Mick Slocum here. Teddy coming a little bit too near to it. Paul McGrath offers a bit of variation. The option was well chosen. Hit with unflagging power and accuracy by Paul McGrath for his first point of the afternoon. And Cork has opened up a three-point gap. To Jerry McEntee. School of thought I know in me that held that maybe Jerry would be better coming in from the subs bench, but he, he's had a good final so far. Coffee. Jerry McIntyre under it. So to Kevin Foley. Liam Hayes calling. A good rousing run forward by Hayes. Linking up with Peggy. This is a great move. Oh, it's a great save by John Kearns from Brian Stafford. Well, the turning point of the hurling final, surely, was a great save by Ger Cunningham. And on this occasion, at the same goal, at the same angle, it's John Kearns, the football goalkeeper, who produces a masterful save. A brilliant piece of interpassing. Three Mead men involved, following that great one by Hayes. Watch for the shot and the great save and parry by the goalkeeper back with Martin O'Connell, marking very fast as Meade cuts a very quick 45 and Colin Coyle signals his arrival in this match with Meade's first point of the second half. John O'Driscoll is coming in and it looks like Mick McCarthy is going off. To this afternoon here in Croke Park. There's nothing cool or crisp about the action out on the field as Martin O'Connell concedes the free to Cork. Deep inside, fisted out by Jerry McIntyre. David Beggy coming more and that's Terry Ferguson rather. Beggy was uh, the player who's coming more and more into the game trying to feed off the pieces. It's Bernard Flynn. Outside towards Colin Coyle. And Meade fans will wonder why he wasn't in from the beginning. Touch forward to David Beggy, the player we mentioned just a moment ago. And as if to justify that last statement, he's put the ball over the bar. His first point of the match. From a position where the half-forwards failed to score in the first half, they've now scored two between them. And that's Paddy Hayes who's going in there for Cork, one of the substitutes there who played in the semi-final. Paddy Russell, the referee, holding up for a minute, and it's Dave Barry, I think, who's going off. Cork's ploy, I think, here is to bring in fresh faces, fresh legs, because of their numeric, numerical uh, disadvantage. Here's Coffey. Leading, however, by a solitary point. Eight points to seven. John Odisco. It's very much anyone's final. Will that yet happen? Larry Tompkins opens up a two-point gap once more. Larry's kicked his third point, all three from freeze. With uh, Joe Castles coming in as another Mead sub. Well, the introduction of Colum Coyle certainly had a telling effect on the game so far. So now Joe Castles, the most senior member of this Mead team, 
gets a piece of the action. Larry Tompkins against Martin O'Connell. Strong challenge by O'Connell. Paul McGrath neatly takes it back up. The challenge coming in there from Brendan Riley. But there was a lovely pick up there by Paul McGrath. Brilliant skill. Jerry McEntee's the one, by the way, who's gone off the Meath team. Replaced by Joe Castles. Tompkins the free taker. Into Shea Fahey. And what's a very dark afternoon really here in Croke Park. The picture you're seeing is a good deal brighter. And it's looking particularly bright for Cork right now. As Shea Fahey kicks its fourth point of the match. Remember it's a hundred years since Cork last won. The hurling and football championship in the one year. Paddy Hayes. Paul McGrath trying to hold it on in play there. That's gone wide. A huge leap in the air by John O'Driscoll has moved out in towards midfield and there's just one man in the full forward line right now for Cork. The jersey of the, the full forward was being held, but it's Peggy who gets through. The support outside. Cunningham always looks so casual, so deceptively fast as well, however. A much underrated defender. On court Paddy Hayes at the poor pass. Snapped up by Robbie O'Malley. And now Mead are pressing forward. But Cork are defiant. This is Slocum. Just one man to knock forward to. There he is, Paul McGrath. He's got support from John O'Driscoll, who's made a run away on the left-hand side. And McGrath, loving it across towards him, comes down. But read well by Liam Hayes, fouled by Danny Cullity, taking the free quickly himself. The tempo of the game has really picked up in the second half. Gillick driving it forward towards Brian Stafford. Punches going out there to try and get the ball. Cunahan here. Driving it down. And the 14 men of Cork are doing a really good job. Just as we did when they were down to 14 in 1988. Tompkins to extend Cork speed if he can. He's done just that. There are four points between the teams. Larry Tompkins has kicked his fourth pointed three. back for me. Time is still on their side if they're good enough. There are 11 minutes remaining. Brendan Riley. Rapidly delivered to Hayes. Up on the 45 metre line. Mead needing a couple of scores badly. A goal will do nicely for them. Hayes stopped by Barry Coffey. Coffey says it was a fair shoulder to shoulder. The referee however didn't see it that way. It's a free in for Mead. Well Hayes is certainly hurt having made that good run through the centre. This is the action once again. Now was it a fair shoulder to shoulder challenge as Barry Coffey was claiming? Well, he certainly went in with the shoulder but he caught him in the upper chest. Ten minutes to go. And the deficit is cut back. Thanks to the trusty boot of Brian Stafford who kicks his fifth point. Three between them. Tommy Dow there trying to push up on uh, Mick Slocum. Breaks on to Larry Tompkins. Outside towards Teddy McCarthy. Cunahan. Belted inside but wide. Well, it may lack some of the style that we've seen in football finals in the past, but certainly not the passion and the commitment from the two teams involved. Danny Colletti takes it down cleverly, released to Barry Coffey, picking out his man. That's a lovely pass forward, really intelligent ball by Coffey to Paul McGrath. Half block down, safely gathered by the goalkeeper. That's the countdown of the time, and we have just over uh, six minutes to go. 
Castles. Inside to Colm O'Rourke, now operating out around the middle. Trying to get that forward line moving. Colm Coyle against Barry Coffey. Good looking ball, Tommy Dow across, waiting for it. Breaks down, spills loose into the arms of Mick Slocum. Blocked down by Colm O'Rourke. Picked up. And there was a trip on Niall Cahalan. Three out to Cork, taken rapidly. Shea Fahey. Larry Tompkins. Cork trying to see off the Mead challenge. Well, there's never been very much between these teams when they've met in Liga Championship in recent years. And Mick Lyons gathering that ball, coming forward, cut out by Mick Stoker. Teddy McCarthy finding Barry Coffey. Down, down field, but there's nobody at all inside the 45 metre line where that ball was released. Mead then having to come forward, having to press home their numerical superiority. 15 against 14, but they're behind the number by three points, 11 to 8. Brendan Riley trying to spill it loose outside, finding Brian Stafford. It's curling. O'Rourke keeps it in play. And it goes finally off Stephen O'Brien and it's gone for a 45. That's John Cleary who's coming in as a substitute over there for Cork, the number 21. Another forward. And we just wait to see who the player going off is going to be. Meanwhile, Stafford in the gathering gloom of Kirk Park. And it's looking a little bit gloomy for the Royal County just now. Paul McGrath is the one who's gone off the team. Paul McGrath's gone off. So the full forward line that Cork started the match with are now all off the field. Both teams having used up their full complement of subs. It's down to the 29 players on the field to resolve this All-Ireland. Brilliant interception. Martin O'Connor runs into Slocum. Still presses forward. Referee's whistle sounds. Referee penalises for 13 metres for not getting back fast enough. O'Connell. Liam Hayes under it. Doing well. Getting inside. Meade leading the goal. He's taken down. Now, was it inside or outside? His legs are outside and it's an ordinary 13 metres free. Very dangerous indeed from Cork's point of view as Liam Hayes had got in there ahead of Conor Cunahan. Watch as he was trying to make his way into the large rectangle, pushed and pulled clearly outside. Stafford has cut it back to a two-point game. The crowd was tense and somewhat silent earlier on. Now spilling out their emotions, getting behind both teams. Castles, the great old warrior, up as far as Colm O'Rourke. Can Mead pull this game out of the fire yet? They've won a free. Well, as so often happens, 15 men sometimes have the greatest of difficulty getting the mastery of 40. A point would put, would put it back to just a one point difference. He's put it wide. It may be an extravagant miss yet. But really, Mead so far have been very profligate in their shooting. They had 13 wide so far against six for Cork. This is picked up by Joe Castles. Mead coming searching, I'm sure, for a goal. Colin O'Rourke inside to Tommy Dowd. Blocked down brilliantly by Stephen O'Brien. Held off by Colin O'Rourke, linking up back there with Barry Coffey. Brilliant defender that he is, Coffey. He plays it outside to Paddy Hayes. Larry Tompkins, it's a mad scramble. 11 points to 9. This side has never beaten me. Liam Hayes trying to nurse that one out over the end line and make it a mead possession. Well, Teddy was never...
15 metres penalty for about the fourth time in this match. This is it then for me. This is it for Cork as well, however. Slocum outside for John Abrisco. It's going to be a free. Time all missed up. They live on the edge of their seats. for the Corkman and of course the completion of that elusive hurling and football double. One feels that 1990 will be a year that all Cork people will look back on with great pride and satisfaction. But of course the end of every championship year also heralds the beginning of new dreams and aspirations as Gaelic fans all over the country and indeed abroad look ahead to the next year full of hope and promise that it brings. But we hope that you've enjoyed our look back at the highlights of 1990's football season. Until the next time, bye bye.